Story of Prophet Sulaiman a.s. Prophet Sulaiman or Solomon a.s. was born in Jerusalem. He was the young son of Prophet Dawud a.s. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed him with many gifts, including the ability to speak to animals and control genes. Solomon was very intelligent and wise from childhood. He was only 11 years old when two people came to him and Prophet Dawud a.s. to settle a dispute. One of the men owned a field. He said that a sheep belonging to the other man came into his field and ate all his grapes and he wanted compensation. The prophet then thought for a while and decided that the sheep owner should give his sheep to the vine owner to compensate it for his loss. The man said, but sir, this sheep is all I have. Young Solomon spoke up and gave the solution. Let the sheep owner work in the field until the grapes grow back, and let the owner of the field keep his sheep until then. The owner of the field can make a living using their wool and milk until the crops grow back, and when the grapes are ready, the owner of the field can take back his field and return the sheep to their owners. Prophet Dawud a.s. was surprised. This is the right decision. The man thanked Solomon for reaching a fair decision. Prophet Dawud a.s. was the wisest king of Israel and a noble prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Solomon learned from his father's vast knowledge and often joined his father at court. He was a keen observer and occasionally contributed to the discussion. One day, Prophet Dawud a.s. called his 19 sons in front of the leaders and wise men of his kingdom. He then put forth the following question. 1. Which thing is closest or nearest to human? 2. Which is the farthest thing? 3. Which two things are attached to each other? 4. Which is the most astonishing thing? 5. Which two things remain unchanged? 6. Which two things are always different? 7. Which two things are opposed to each other? 8. What is the action the result of which is good? 9. What is the action of the result of which is bad? Prophet Dawud a.s. sons become confused and could not answer the question. The youngest son, Solomon, stood up and gave this following answer. 1. The closest thing to man is the hereafter, or life and death, because one can die at any time. 2. The first thing is the time that had passed, which will not come again. 3. The two things that they are attached to each other are human body and soul. 4. The most astonishing thing is a human body, or dead, without a spirit. 5. The two things that remain the same are heaven and earth. 6. The two things that are different are day and night. 7. Two things that are opposite to each other are life and death. 8. Action that end well are patient and restrained when angry. 9. The action whose end is bad is to be hasty when angry. Impressed with the answer, Prophet Dawud a.s. appointed Prophet Solomon a.s. to take over as a ruler after his death. Thus, with the passage of time, Prophet Solomon a.s. inherited the kingdom of Israel and was chosen by Allah to commence his prophethood. He begged his Lord for a kingdom that would be unrivaled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted Solomon's request and bestowed many miracles upon him, such as the ability to control the wind which he used to travel at incredible speed. Then genes were under his command and he controlled vast copper mines for making weapons. He was even blessed with the ability to communicate with animals. One day, while Prophet Solomon a.s. and his army were on their way to Ascalon, they passed through a valley. An ant saw the army approaching and shouted to warn its colony, Run your, to your home, or you will be destroyed by Solomon and his army. The prophet heard the ants cried and ordered his entourage to stop and allow the ants to pass. The prophet was grateful to be able to save the life of the ant colony. 
Prophet Solomon alaihissalam also had jinn and bird in his army. They all maintained order and discipline, and he knew them all well. One day, the Prophet noticed that one of his bird troops was absent, the Hut Hut bird. It wasn't long before the bird arrived and explained his tardiness. He also said that he had news of the land of Sab'ah. Sab'ah was ruled by a queen named Balkis, who was very wealthy but who worshipped the sun. Prophet Solomon thought it was his duty to spread the religion of Allah as widely as possible. The Prophet then wrote a letter to Queen Balkis and ordered the bird to send it by dropping the letter in front of the queen and fly to hide. The queen opened the letter that contained a call to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The queen was greatly disturbed, so she called her advisors. They told her that although they had the power to fight, they wanted to settle this matter peacefully. Queen Balki sent her messengers to the Prophet's palace on the pretext of bringing gifts. She asked the messenger to learn about the Prophet's army and kingdom. When the messengers arrived at the Prophet's palace, they realized that Sab'a was nothing compared to Prophet's kingdom. They were surprised to see lions, tigers, and birds serving in the army. Prophet Solomon realized that the messengers were there to gather information about him. When the messengers offered the gift, they were surprised at the Prophet's reaction. The Prophet told them, Allah has given me sufficient wealth and a great kingdom. He then asked them not to present the gifts and take them back. The Queen's messenger returned with the gifts and information that left Queen Balkis dissatisfied and curious. So she decided to visit the Prophet. She asked one of the messengers to inform the Prophet that she was on her way to meet him. Accompanied by her royal officials and servants, she left Sapa. When Prophet Solomon heard that the Queen Sab'ah were on her way, he decided to test her. He ordered the jinn to take the throne of Queen Balkis before she reached the place. One of the jinn placed the throne before her in the blink of an eye. Having first disguised the throne to test whether the queen would recognize it in its altered state. When Queen Balkis arrived, she was greeted with the splendor of the Prophet's palace. The Prophet then asked well pointed to the throne if this was hers. Queen Belkis was puzzled and said, It seems so, very similar to mine. The Prophet judged her to be smart. Prophet Solomon invited her to the great hall. The floor of the hall was gigantic glass-covered aquarium. When the queen entered the hall, she thought the floor was flooded with water, so she lifted her skirt lightly for fear of wetting it. The prophet then told her that this was actually glass and not water. When she returned to Sapa, she understood that the sun they worshipped was none other than one of all lost creation. She repented, stopped washing the sun, and asked her people to do the same. Prophet Solomon married Queen Balkis and ruled the two kingdoms wisely. The people were even more peaceful and prosperous. Prophet Solomon lived in the midst of glory and all obeying obeyed him. Before the end of his life, Prophet Solomon wanted to build a spacious and magnificent place of worship. He commanded his genes and supervised its contraction while resting on a staff. Unbeknownst to unknown, the angels of death took him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although the Prophet's spirit had been detached from his body, Allah disdained his body to remain intact with the same position resting on his staff. All the workers were still working hard until one day the Prophet's staff was eaten by termites and broken. The Prophet's body fell on its face. A healer came to check on Prophet's condition, and to his surprise, he realized the Prophet had been dead for several weeks. Prophet Solomon died at the age of 59 years and was buried in Baitul Maqdis, Jerusalem. <laughs>